Hello, welcome to the show. I'm Jacqueline Frenchmore and you're on A1R Striking Radio and Instruct TV. It's good to be back for yet another week. Uh, and this week is my first Sunday back at the Psychic and Wellbeing Expos. Uh, and I'm doing one in Pakenham in Melbourne, South East. Uh, this um, Sunday, so it's going to be 10 till 5. I'm, I'm really excited because I'm going to be back on stage, uh, flying by the seat of my pants, no doubt, uh, doing live readings for the dem uh, demonstration readings for the audience and um, doing a bit of a talk on uh, psychic stuff and how to open up your gift. So um, that's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, and the time zone's changed in Melbourne, so I'm so <laughs> just... <laughs> the thing is, this show is always 8 p.m. Thursdays, year-round, U.S. Eastern time. Uh, but the time in Melbourne keeps changing. So in summer, I get a sleep in, right? And it's like midday. Yeah, cruising on through. Cuts in the middle of my day, fine. Um, but fine. And, um, uh, and then we get to sort of autumn and we go, right, so it's going to be 11 a.m. now. Uh, and that just creeps up on you all of a sudden, which it did today, which is kind of funny. Um, and then in winter, when you sort of think, oh, it's like 10 a.m. show, when it's like, oh, I don't know. And I couldn't do last week's show because I sounded like Stevie Nicks' brother. I mean, sounding like Stevie Nicks, sexy. Stevie Nicks' brother, if, uh, you know, um, nothing wrong, I'm sure, with, um, with that, but... It was just that bit too far to go. So, yeah, so I'm, I'm really looking forward to firstly being able to speak to you, like at all, uh, and secondly, to be able to speak to you and be able to uh, be so excited about coming up to this expo on Sunday. So it's um, you know, something I'm really looking forward to getting back into the swing of because I used to go to 30 events around Australia uh, per year, plus my full-time client, plus the radio show, plus my students, plus somehow sleeping. Uh, while writing magazine articles, probably sleeping while writing them, which probably explains the content of them nicely. Um, and um, uh, you know, somehow fitting a life in uh, with that and uh, wasn't very balanced. So COVID actually took me out of that and got me to really rethink things. So if you sort of think of the COVID lockdown, in, in Melbourne, in Australia, we had like 121 days of lockdown. So practically... You know, like a whole third of the year, there's only 365 days a year, right? And so 121 of them were in 2020 uh, for Melbourne, was actually in lockdown. And there was points where you could only go out for one hour a day and you could only go five kilometres from home. And um, it all made for massive introspection that maybe people hadn't, you know, gotten to think about before about what do I actually need and what do I always stuff for? You know, it's like, so now you've got people going back into the workplace and now we're, I think we're at 75% capacity for workplaces now where it was at first you couldn't go to work at all, you had to work from home and it became 25% capacity then I think 50%, now we're up to something like 75%. Now we can actually in Melbourne have actual a party with people there dancing um, you know, in, in a larger quantity and certainly Latin dancing has been back for a while but you know, lots of dancing in mainstream sort of events. So. It's been kind of really weird coming back in and, uh, you know, into the swing of things and it's a different swing of course. Like everything's changed because um, where people would eat before, they might not buy their food uh, for work now. And there's probably, you know, quite a few people out making their food. So, you know, this is changing the cafe lifestyle and landscape and Melbourne's sort of famous for its cafe, cafe lifestyle and restaurants and coffee, just all that coffee, like 18,000 ways of making coffee. It's like New York. Uh, so you sort of, um, you know, the coffee is still here because practically the only thing you could do in lockdown was walk five kilometres buy coffee. So people were buying lots of takeaway coffee and, you know, you couldn't bring the keep cup and the keep cup's all very environmental and, you know, um, saving the world. Uh, but no, we don't want your dirty keep cup. <laughs> it's going to make it and go away. <laughs> uh, so... It's a different environment now, and the heat cups still haven't come back from what I've seen so far. Um, so the cards I pulled out for today's reading is just an overview energy. Um, the card, the central card I picked out, uh, you know, is actually uh, Pachamama, uh, which and this is out of the Goddess Oracle. Yeah, you can pull it back so you can see it. 
Uh, and this is actually all about healing and wholeness. And it's, if you can actually see that tape like thing around here, it's actually, um, it's got scales on it. <laughs> so we sort of see, uh, you know, that kind of energy of maybe the iguana, maybe uh, the snake energy there and, and also lizards. So, you know, it's sort of like being able to uh, go back into your own space and work out what actually makes you whole now. Um, the card before that was actually Carly, which is all about addressing your own fear. Uh, and certainly during 2020 and everything that's been going on, uh, people have been worried about, you know, their financial well-being, how this is all going to be going, um, you know, where to from here. Um, certainly lately clients have been concerned because we've got a system over here in Melbourne uh, called JobKeeper. It's been paying money for employers to keep staff on and uh, that ends this Sunday. Uh, but where are we going? And the next card at the very end of that, after the, the healing one, is actually Aphrodite. And that's all about love. But also, if we look at Aphrodite, uh, you know, that's that very Venusian energy. Uh, it's all about love in a very different way. So love can mean healing. Uh, you know, that love can actually mean romantic love as well. Um, but, you know, on one side of the healing uh, card, so when we look at this thread, and I'll put it in selfie mode. I'll have to do it this way. Um, okay, not in selfie mode. Here we go. <laughs> Facing the right way. Um, so there's the card for today in the middle. Uh, and then to the left, we've got, uh, you know, uh, your Carly Ma, which is all about fear. So you can sort of see she's reaching out, mashing out. And then we've got Aphrodite, um, you know, doing this love at the end. So literally, Punch your mama, which is healing, is in between love and fear. Uh, so we sort of look at the wording on this, and we've got, uh, you know, Carly, we're dealing with the fear. Oops. Aphrodite thought she'd come forward and say hi. Uh, just having to get this around the camera angle. So literally, there's that word fear, which is kind of out of focus, but what it is. Um, and then, of course, Aphrodite, which you turn up one of these days, there it is, love. Yeah, so literally, for our healing, we're sometimes needing a balance between love and fear. Uh, and when we look at fear, it's really important to look at uh, situations like, I'm actually terrified of public speaking, right? I used to hate going on TV, <laughs> which is hilarious because look at this, digital TV radio, right? Uh, but in the 90s, I was very comfortable, once I got comfortable, <laughs> uh, being on the microphone on radio because I could be tucked away, hidden, and you would hear my voice. You couldn't see me. I liked that. It's very safe. I could be kind of intimate with people, uh, but you couldn't see me. So I was sort of safe to do that. Uh, whereas when uh, this panel was, when I first came on it in 2014, uh, it was radio. Great. Came on the video. Oh. <laughs> it's been a long process. Uh, so when I go up on stage, I'm actually going through that journey of fear and love all the time and balancing in the middle. Um, so, you know, if I'm doing a speech somewhere, uh, I'm actually incredibly nervous at the start. But the way I overcome that, and the way when looking at reading, looking at doing reading yourself, uh, to overcome that fear of what if I'm not good enough, what if I'm wrong, uh, don't want don't to say the wrong thing and harm this person, all these sorts of things. Um, the thing that gets you through that is to actually step aside from the fear and go into that spiritual energy of love and go, I'm not alone here, spirit's got me. Uh, actually listen to your instincts, your intuition, listen to your guides, um, you know, and learning to connect with your guides. And that starts with learning to connect with your higher self and meditating and being on the whole vision. But uh, by learning to really let go and let flow, uh, to trust your guides and to go with the energy and allow it to pour through you, not trying to control it, just allowing it to pour through you. Um, and what happens is, uh, you know, it, you saw it, you take flight. And the first time I was ever on radio, I was actually packing my dad, terrified, <laughs> literally packing my dad. Uh, and um, my co-host, I uh, sorry, he ended up being my co-host. He ran the show at the time. Um, you know, I was a guest, and he said to me, "I'll have to stop you right there with what you're saying about me." And I thought, "Oh no, it's all wrong." And he goes, "Because everyone's going to know too much about me because it's been bang on accurate." And I'm actually still in touch with that guy these days. Like nearly 30 years later, um, and um, you know, he he said to me at the end of the show, "Be my co-host," and I said, "Oh, can I just be your guest? Because you might not like me." 
I, the thing is, the human side goes into that fear and says those sorts of things about you might not like me and this might not go well. Um, but when you go into the group side, you just grow with it. Um, you know, that energy channels through. And if you're coming from the heart, when you're working with your intuition uh, and your land, then energy to flow through and you know through you, the messages to flow through you, uh, it can't go wrong, usually, uh, as long as you're staying in that place. But when you go back into the fear or you go, how good am I? How good is not being shot when you're a female doing protest in Australia? <laughs> Just ask our Prime Minister. Um, you know, how good is that? Uh, when you get too, too up there, uh, that's when you sort of drop down again. So it's about keeping that that lower human side out and going back up into that light, staying back on message, staying in tune with your heart. So whenever you're wanting to develop your instincts, that's a great place to start. This has been me today. I'll catch you next week. I'm going to go up onto my Facebook uh, Jacqueline Crestmore Live uh, Facebook page where I'll be talking a bit more about this and uh, doing readings live. In the meantime, a one r Psychic Radio, Moonstruck TV, more shows tonight and more readings. Catch you next week. Lots of love. See you Sunday. It's been packing. Bye.